So I'm sure many of you have seen Ngannou versus John Jones squaring off at the PFL, I think it was yesterday, and um, they seem like they were pretty down to fight, to be honest. And um, it got me thinking, who would win in a fight, John Jones or Francis Ngannou? So today we've got some vid we've got some fight videos from both fighters. We're going to be breaking them down frame by frame and trying to see who would win in this style matchup and um, who would it potentially suit. So to start it off, we've got Cain Velasquez versus Francis Ngannou, and we're going to see how Francis Ngannou dealt with a good wrestler in Cain Velasquez. So without further ado, I'm MMA Tizzo, and let's get right into these fight breakdowns. We've got ones for John Jones too. He's coming later on in the video, and we're going to analyze both their styles against each other and see who would maybe win this matchup. Let's go. So Cain Velasquez for Francis Ngannou. First round's just begun. We're going to get right into it. Oh my god, I'm losing my mind. So I'm sure many of you have seen John Jones squaring off with Francis and Ganu at a PFL event previously. And then it got me thinking, who would win that fight? So today what we're gonna be doing is breaking down fight clips from both of the fighters' fights, and um we're gonna be analysing them frame by frame and trying to see who would win the matchup or who would be better favoured to win the matchup. Um, and why it would uh, suit their fighting style. So without further ado, we've got Francis Ngannou versus Cain Velasquez right here. And um, let's have a look at how Francis Ngannou dealt with a good, confident wrestler in Cain Velasquez who had just returned to the UFC. So Fra Cain immediately shoots in as Francis goes for a 1-2. And then uh, on the break there, Cain Velasquez gets hit by a massive shot. And considering this is Ngannou, these are small shots, but they're still super powerful just because of his strength, okay? So Kane shoots here, as you can see, he's going for the, uh, trying to get the double leg there. And Ngannou lands this, if you look closely, he's, he's about to land a shot with his right hand. And it lands, and you can see his head pins back from the sheer force of Ngannou's punch. It was a proper big uppercut there, and it completely jelly legs Kane Velasquez. And in fact, it jelly legs, legs him in such an uncomfortable position that I'm pretty sure he blew his knee out at this moment because of the impact force it caused him to fall funny. And then um, from another angle, you can see Kane uh, Velasquez wincing in pain here. So he's completely basically out of this fight already, and he's just been rocked, okay? So he's rocked, he falls to the ground, he basically accepts he's done already, and then Francis lands some huge, huge follow-up shots to uh, grounded Cain Velasquez and it's done, okay? Science is a crowd. So from what what from that short fight, what we gathered is that Francis Ngannou, when he dives in, compared to a lot of other fighters, does surprisingly well. And obviously, I think this would be good against John Jones because as we'll see later on, John Jones doesn't like being backed up, okay? So let's get on to the next fight. Right, we move on. Stipe versus Ngannou. So Stipe, obviously... More talented than Cain Velasquez at this point. Stipe was good here. You know, it was pretty much prime of Stipe at this point. He was the champion. And then Ngannou was getting the rematch after Ngannou basically did terrible the first time. But Ngannou claimed he evolved. So uh, we all needed to see how it was going to go. So round one kicks off. Obviously, Ngannou already more patient than um, in the previous fight. You can see it here. So he's throwing out jabs. He's trying to get distance here trying to measure distance with his hands, as you can see there. His footwork looks improved, okay? Better striking from Ngannou. He's showing improvements here already. Okay, He's taking his time. They're both fainting each other. Old Ngannou would never do this. We know this. So Ngannou's already showing signs that he's an okay striker, especially compared to heavyweights. Fainting in, go, coming in and out. Misses a few sh shots, but he doesn't leave his head exposed. Not really in a bad position at all. Good boxing. Moving on. Goes for a leg kick. It lands. It lands well. Um, you know, it shows that Francis Ngannou's taking leg kicks. He never used to do that. So um, he's clearly been learning new techniques. And it just makes him more dangerous, more of a threat. You know, it, it makes him less one-dimensional. Um, if he's learning leg kicks, and um, we'll later see that he's actually incorporated more kicks into his kicking background. So um, it just means that against Jones, it'd be a bit more challenging just to deal with everything. And obviously Francis Ngannou, very strong kicks, I imagine. You definitely wouldn't want to be getting kicked by them. We move on. So still fainting, still fainting. Stipe's biting on the feints. He's moving back. He really doesn't want to get hit by that pirate because he's seeing what it does to people. Okay, this isn't very good from Ngannou, I'm going to be honest. He he whiffs a leg kick, he notices, 
So um, I guess we'll give him credit for this. So he notices he's going to be a bit exposed as he swivels. So he throws his spinning back fist, which, you know, fair play. Um, we'll give him credit that he, at least he didn't just whiff because, you know, he was in a bit of a vulnerable position there. So he throws the back fist. Obviously, it doesn't land and he's a bit off balance, but he's fine. We move on. Stipe, double jab, sorry, Nganu double jabs in and then throws an overhand right and it lands clean. Amazing shot. Stipe's chin absolutely took that one well. And um, what a good chin from Stipe there, to be honest. And then Ngannou exits, which is good because, you know, old Ngannou probably wouldn't have done that. He leaves and then um, he tries to get a shot on the break and he whiffs. Back to patient Ngannou, as you have noticed. Moving on. So, obviously, Ngannou's just landed, fainting again. Stipe now knows of the power, so he's, you know, he's pretty eager to not get hit by that again. So, he's just kind of staying on the outside. So, Ngannou's controlling the fight there. He can set the pace because he's got the middle of the octagon, as we all know. Very good position for Ngannou. He doesn't really like being on the back foot, obviously. Okay, it cuts to a takedown. Stipe takedown. This is a pivotal moment for Stipe because if he gets a takedown, there's a good chance he can win the fight by doing it again and again and again. And this is his hardest... Um, take down attempt because Ngannou is going to be his strongest in the first. So immediately Stipe is in on a single here. He moves in, shifts, tries to turn the corner on Ngannou. Ngannou here sprawls well. Um, he does the right thing. He gets his hips in a good position. Then completely sprawls the take down and stuffs it here. Completely flattens Stipe. Um, you know, just good position here. Um, and Francis. So obviously you do just expect Francis to get up here, right? Well, no. Takes the back, goes for the back. He's got, the, got him. Um, he's now got the back. Takes Stepe down. Would you look at that? Takes Stepe down and lands big shots. And considering these are Ngannou shots, okay? Ngannou ground and pound is huge. You can see it ricocheting off Stepe's head. Really, really big shots. Huge for Ngannou. I, a lot of people didn't actually realize how pivotal these shots are, but they'd really, really hurt. And look, Steeper's head just bouncing back and back and forth of these shots. Big shots from Ngannou. Showing evolution in his game. Then he shoots the takedown. Gonna be honest, not so sure he should have done that, but um, it didn't really backfire on him. So uh, we can ignore that and he'll know not to do it in his next fight. Moving on. So obviously, Stipe defends the takedown because, you know, his wrestling's good. Stipe is kind of panicked after that. You can kind of see in his eyes, he's like, oh dear Jesus, I'm about to get knocked out because he knows if he failed that, he's probably not going to get the rest. We move on. Stipe looking a bit frantic here. Ngannou throws a head kick and lands. Very impressive from Ngannou. Hurts Stipe a bit. You can see it. He didn't expect that from Ngannou. Really good. Didn't really telegraph it that much considering how big he is, so uh, credit to him there. And then we continue here. So um, obviously Stipe is looking pretty bruised up here. Um, Ngannou's in pretty fresh he doesn't even look overly tired still the first round so it's good Stipe kind of throws a meaningless kick he doesn't really land properly okay so there's the end of the round okay so we move on round two alright let's go so obviously Ngannou thinks he can pick up the pace here he's still pretty patient he's probably recovered after that minute of breaks they've got and then um, he's ready to do a lot more volume and output, and he's got his power back in his arms. So we will continue here. So Ngannou dives in, lands a massive left straight after missing the first, and um, obviously knocks Stipe down. Stipe is with it, he's clear. So he tries to get back up. Ngannou pushes him against the stage just with raw strength, just pushes him up, lands big follow-up shots as they clinch, and he hurts Stipe a little bit on the break, right? Then Ngannou throws off massive, massive left hand, just misses Stipe's face on the break as they leave. And Stipe catches him there with a massive shot, a big right hand. And Ngannou steps back. Ngannou's chin's really good, by the way. So Ngannou steps back. Stipe thinks he's wobbled Ngannou, but he doesn't realise that he's got an absolute giga chad chin. Runs forward. Look at him there. Look at his leg position. He is rushing forward because he's thinking, geez, I need to get the finish now. So he rushes forward. Ngannou isn't wobbled. Throws a massive check hook, lands clean on his chin, instantly KOs Stipe, out on his feet, unconscious, done. The fight's over. That's the end of Stipe. Ngannou, the new UFC heavyweight champion. Amazing performance. What would I rate that out of 10? I'd give it an 8.5. It was a really, really good performance from Ngannou. Championship material there for a heavyweight especially. And um, 
The reason why that's scary for Jones is he sprawled the takedown really well and also he showed how good his strength is. He pushed Stipe up against the cage numerous times and um, used it to sprawl the takedown. He took the back, so he's showing evolution in his wrestling and then um, this is basically the best in Ghana we'd ever seen to this point. So um, if you're Jones right now, you're probably thinking, yeah, you know, I maybe don't want that match up. Um, this guy's bigger than me. He's pro he's definitely stronger than me. Obviously, punches way harder than me. And you know, he's not that bad at striking. Is Jones John Jones better at striking? Yes, he is. Okay, but John Jones will still get hit by Ngannou. It's inevitable. At one point in the fight, there's going to be a few big shots landed, and we'll see why in the next fight, which is John Jones versus um, Dominic Wright. Right, I'm going to bring us to the next and the final important fight in this analysis. John Jones versus Dominic Reyes. So it starts off with an important moment for seeing if John Jones could take down Ngannou in some ways. So let's have a look at this. So obviously Dominic Reyes charges in, tries to land a straight, misses. John Jones has the perfect opportunity to shoot and he does. Let's have a look at what happens. Runs in quickly. They're both off their mark, rushing in. John Jones gets up to his feet, which is rare because he usually just runs about like a spider for the start of his fights. There's the straight. Misses John Jones' head by a few centimetres. Right over the top, he's fine, doesn't get hit. Shoots in, good good shot, you know, good timing. You know, years of experience and training have taught him that. Good good point to shoot, does well. Shoots in on a double, can't quite wrap his um, legs around, his arms around Dominic Reyes' legs. And then um, Reyes gets his arms under. Somehow, even though, bear in mind, both his arms were above John Jones by a lot when he shot in. Lands a knee. John Jones goes for a knee there, you can see it there, misses completely. Reyes moves out of the way. That to me, that's kind of worrying for Jones because it suggests that against big guys, because we know that Dominic Reyes is a big light heavyweight, he might struggle. And obviously I know he took down Gan, but to be fair, Gan isn't very good, okay? He's not good at wrestling. He's a good fighter, but he isn't good at wrestling. It's a major hole in his game. And um Nganu just took him down with raw strength. So um we're not gonna look too much into that because Gan is terrible at fighting. Well, oh, terrible at wrestling it anyway. So um, we're going to see what happens after this. So obviously, they break. So Reyes is completely fine now. Got it on the feet where he wants it to be. We're going to move on, right? We're going to go about three. For, we're going to go in, I think it's four minutes 30. Okay. Let's go here. So this is round three. Let's have a look. So Jones is getting pieced up, so he doesn't want to keep this on the feet. It's been three rounds of him getting pieced up. Everyone agrees he basically lost these three rounds, right? Shoots in, okay? Good shot. Dominic Reyes' arms are not there. Gets him in. So Dominic Reyes has his arms low, so it's good for him here. Get about one arm under here. for the. He's trying to sprawl this takedown, trying to stuff it. Stuffed it, sorry. And then... Look at that. You can see from his posture, Dominic Reyes is just using his raw strength at this point to lift John Jones up. You can see it in his face. Works. John tries to lift him up, but uh, Reyes is too strong, and he just pushes him up with all his you know, strength in his chest and his shoulders. He pushes him right up, and his hip strength too. Completely stuffs the takedown. Clinches Jones. Gets over-unders. So, um, yeah. Good for Reyes, stuffs another takedown. Also, bear in mind, this is after 15 minutes of fighting, so Reyes is considerably more tired at this point. So, um, good for Reyes, lands an elbow. So, it just shows you, you know, John Jones, he's all right in the clinch, but he can still be hit. So, um, yeah, we move on. We're going to go further on in this clip. So, Jones is in again. Picks Reyes up, okay? Reyes isn't as lucky this time. Good takedown from John Jones here. He readjusts here and he's got the legs. He's got um, his arms wrapped around the legs at this point. Gets the double leg. Good takedown from Jones. Okay, fair play. Good takedown. Um, lots of experience showing in there and readjusting to get the takedown. And he brings him to the mat. So John Jones has finally got Dominic Reyes down. So, you know, let's see what he's going to do then. Because he's spent basically the last four rounds trying to get a takedown to some degree. I know he's been striking, but he's wanted this fight on the ground. So let's see how well John Jones controls Dominic Reyes on the ground. I gassed Dominic Reyes to some degree. Oh, posts, knees, legs, completely right back up, and he's fine. Okay, worrying for Jones. Oh dear, that's not good. And all I'm thinking right now, when I was re-watching this, is if Dominic Reyes is stronger than Jones, 
Inganu is undoubtedly stronger than him, okay? Because Dominic Reyes is big and he's strong, but Inganu's on a whole other level, okay? This guy's about 50 pounds, 40 pounds heavier, and he's raw muscle as well. And I know Jones is obviously a heavyweight now. He ain't muscle, okay? He's got a lot of fat on him now. He's a big boy, but he's more fat. Shoots again. Pretty sure he gets this. Oh, no, he doesn't. Can't get it. Anyway. So, yeah, we move on. I'm pretty sure he takes him down again. Okay, so he shoots in on a single. Has it. Can't quite get it. I think I honestly I thought he had that in the rewatch. I really did. I thought he had that dominant raise just, just minds strength from off. They get he gets risk control and raise, but he separates and it's not enough. And then he continues to land on him. So what I'm learning from this right now is obviously raise is lighting drones up, right? He's landing, okay. Is Nganu going to land as many shots as raises? Probably not. Not to say Nganu isn't a good uh, striker. We've obviously seen in the Stipe fight. He's good now. He's fainting more. And um, is Nganu going to land on Jones? He is. He's going to land. We know that. He is going to land. He's got pretty quick punches considering the size of him. He's really fast. And um, what it's telling me as well is if Dominic Reyes is stuffing the majority of your takedowns, John, uh, sorry, Francis Ngannou, who stuffed a Stipe Miocic takedown, who's a lot bigger than John Jones, and he's a good wrestler, and we've seen what Stipe does to people who can't wrestle. I mean, we saw it in the first Francis fight. He absolutely demolished him, um, just took him down at will, and then easily won the fight against Ngannou, who just didn't know how to wrestle. So, obviously, Francis has been training his takedown defense. It's not that Stipe sucks. Stipe is a good wrestler. He can take down pretty much anyone. Um, except Nganu because of the strength advantage honestly Nganu is good at defending takedowns now and he's so strong he's undoubtedly the strongest person in the division and it makes me think that if Reyes is posting getting up and or put, getting his arm under and uh, stuffing your takedown just with one arm in and pushing you up with like all the strength he used because you know he was pushing hard we could tell it tells me that Nganu is going to be able to do that so um, what am I saying? Well, I'm saying if Jones doesn't get this down to the ground and keep it down, it would be a long night for Jones. Is Jones the better striker out of the two? Yeah, he's got more tools on the feet. But does that mean he'd piece Ngannou up? No. Ngannou's also got a rock. He's got a granite chin. And he's actually pretty good at counter punching, as we've seen. I mean, obviously, he slipped a few steep pace punches, landed some good counters. Um, but more importantly, he's good at diving in. And I don't think that John Jones likes when people dive in. I really don't. I think he likes, as we can see in the, if we look back, we'll scan through this clip, look, John Jones likes it when he's the one in control, when he's in the middle, and against Francis, you know, you're not going to want to exactly walk towards him, are you, because obviously of his power, and then um, the moments where John Jones is actually losing the fight, if we skip through, is actually when, look, let's have a look here, Ray's dives in, okay, he lands, continues forward, Jones retreats, and he gets a few punches off. You know, obviously, Jones thought he was in the clear there. So, the po my point here is, Jones doesn't like when you pressure him. What does Nganu do? He pressures you just with two things. First of all, you know, he's actually quite good at pressuring. And second of all, the, f the fear factor that if you walk forward, you're going to walk into a massive shot. So, what I'm saying is that if this fight do does happen and Jones didn't get a really valuable takedown and take advantage of it, I think it'd be a long night for Jones, and I'd probably say Nganu it would be the man to KO Jones. Um, I think he'd have a good chance in this matchup. I think it's pretty 50-50, but like I just said, if the grappling doesn't work, it'd be a long night for John Jones. Um, the strength of Nganu, I think, would just be too much. He can post better. He's got better takedown defense, I think. Not to say Dominic's is bad, it's good, but I think he's got better takedown defense. He's still improving. And um, he's much stronger, as I said. Bigger opponent, bigger legs, bigger waist, just even harder to take down. And then um, the only way I could see him taking him down like pretty consistently is through trips. But I'm pretty sure, obviously, in Ghana, we train for that too and improve. Um, so, yeah, that's the end of the video. That's my analysis of these two if they fought. Because, obviously, the square up, when maybe in the future we can have a UFC versus PFL event for UFC 300. I think that'd be sick. Main event, Nganu versus Jones, finally settle who is the greatest heavyweight. And then co-main event, why not have Conor McGregor fight someone? Not Chandler, we'll get him a, get him a better matchup. One of the more high matchups out of the top five. And um, I think that'd be a great event. Am I dreaming? Yeah, 
it's probably not going to happen, let's be honest, guys. But you never know. MMA is a crazy sport. But I just want to thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you're new and you're enjoying the content. Leave a like. And um, I'm MMA Tizzer, and I'll see you on in, see you guys in the next video. See ya.